Alright, so welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to do a pipe wrench. And, and I've talked about how important pipe wrenches can be in terms of uh, that they, they can be very good at removing broken bolts. When the head pops off, off uh, you know, you see people like Keith Fenner or this old Tony or uh, I recently saw a guy who has a business of doing nothing but broken bolts. Uh, I can't remember the name of it though, but he has an EDM machine. Very, very interesting stuff. But anyway, pipe wrenches not only like outside the plumbing uh, realm, they can be handy just all around tools. So, so it's good to have them of all sizes. So, you know, I've got this little six inch one, an eight inch one. And, and you know, it, 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 it's helpful to have two like sizes because you know you're gonna get on a pipe, go from different angles. So you sort of work your way up uh, with different sizes and, and multiple types and kinds. And, uh, and you know, you don't want to be shy with the, the sizes of them, so you want to just go whole hog with these things. And, and you know, like I said, you're going to need two of those, and then, you know, sometimes that's not even enough. So then you got to get one of these. And they go bigger than this. This is this is a 36. They, they, they make them, I, I guess there's probably no limit to it. But, uh, but anyway, for your home gamers, this is probably about as big as you're going to get. And, and recently my parents had some uh, some issues with, I guess it was an old cast iron sewer tap or something like that. They needed to get a hold of it. And Anyway, uh, there is a time and a need for these for sure. This isn't just a, a trivial a trivial tool to have around a wall hanger. This is definitely something that, that can be put to work. So what I'm going to do today is uh, try to slow down some of this rust on here. You don't want to let these things get too far gone. Uh, it's okay if your tools are beat up sometimes, um, you know, it happens. But you don't want to let the rust get into the working parts of this. So, you know, it's starting to starting to really affect the jaws. And these are hardened, and and, and like we've seen with the putty knives, and, and what I've learned recently through watching some of the videos like Scout Crafters, is, you know, the, the hardened steel pits more. Uh, and, you know, that's uh, something I had never put together on my own. So anyway, um, you don't want to let the rust get too far along with this. So. What I'm going to do today is just give this a normal treatment through the sand blast, through the media blaster, wire wheel, and then uh, as reluctant as I am to paint these, I think that's probably the best means of protecting them. So uh, anyway, I'm going to put these other ones off to the side for now, get to work on this, and uh, maybe do a couple old school tool restorations for a change. So there we are. It's all disassembled. I'm going to bring this over to the sandblaster and uh, start cleaning it up. can see that there's a crack right here, a crack right here, a crack right here, and it's already been fixed there. So, so there's obviously a, a weakness in this design and or the guy that had this before was an orangutan. So if they were reefing on this thing from some awkward ankle, angle, um, I've seen people, and you know, I mean, I've done it too, but you try to stay away from it. But let's say you're in a pinch and you've got to get a bolt off and it's, you know, at an angle. And you put the, the wrench on it like this and then you start tweaking it, you put another wrench on it. I mean, only in the, the most dire situation would you want to do that because it works against all the, the, the strengths of this wrench. And, and I think that may have been the case here because these, these brakes are sort of longitudinal and, and you can see that they're sort of bent outwards a little bit. So. So it wasn't, they should have, the forces are designed to go back and forth 
However, these are these torsional loads that this is not designed to do. So, so I'm reluctant to use the word weakness in design because I think an orangutan had this. So anyway, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more. And I mean, speaking of not good ideas, I think I might take my little MIG welder and just try to touch these corners because if this is cast steel, then I think you can weld it. If it's cast iron, then you know it's a really bad idea. But my Columbia Cleveland Vice was cast steel and it welded really nicely with my little MIG. So I'm gonna take a quick stab at that, see if it works out, maybe get on the inside somewhere so I don't put too many blemishes on the outside. But um, anyway, at least try to try to put the brakes on these uh, cracks here. So. So that's probably impossible to see for you, but it did seem to clean up all right, and it seemed to blend in there okay. And you can see the heat penetrated through the back. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a shot right here. Let's see what happens. So that cleaned up pretty good. You can see that the uh, the cracks have all but disappeared. The brazing, I think the actual material from the brazing gives this some strength, so I'm reluctant to take that down very much. I'm just going to try to clean it up just a touch. I think what I'm going to do is this has sort of a transition in the handle and I'm afraid that if I paint this it'll cover up the name that you can't probably see right now. So I think my plan is, is I'm going to prep this whole thing with the crud cutter. This is a rust converter like I guess it'd be akin to navel jelly or maybe even a vapo rust to some degree. So anyway it's a it's sort of a, a prep before you paint. I've been using this for a couple months now it's it's pretty good I am not I'm not a shill for any of these places uh, so anyway uh, I use it I buy it they don't give me shit uh, so, so anyway I'm sure there's other stuff out there uh, watch project farm project farm does a lot of experiments with different products and whatnot and I think if you want an unbiased review he's got he's ingenious in terms of the way he tests things but uh, but yeah check his stuff out that's good I love I love that channel uh, but anyway, uh, I, and I think he goes into some rust stuff at some point in time. But anyway, this is what I'm using, this is what I got. Uh, so I'm going to clean this thing up a little bit more uh, here, and then prep, the, prep it for paint. And then uh, I think I'm going to leave, I'm going to probably paint this, leave this because it's just going to get beat up, and then from here down. Uh, but you know, uh, things are subject to change. So. 
Uh, I'm just going to keep cleaning up and see what happens. So that's the 36 inch pipe wrench. It cleaned up pretty good. I went over it with a brush coat of Rust-Oleum gray paint and then uh, after that dried for about 24 hours then I came over it with the Hammerite. Uh, this is sort of a weird bluish green. I really like the color on it. Uh, hopefully this seems to be on there pretty good. Uh, hopefully it doesn't come come off real easily. <laughs> but uh, and, and then I just finished the top with the, the paste wax. So anyway this is a fun little project. I'm going to put it back in the workbench. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, have a good day.